So the next thing I'm going to do is make my table um, that's going to calculate my correlation coefficient or my R value for me. All right. And if you're here, make sure that you've looked for outliers. And if you have outliers, make sure you've decided what you're going to do with them. Are you going to leave them because you feel they're valid data or are you going to throw them out? Because if you're going to throw them out, then you need to take them out of your data before you do um, what you're going to do next. And you need to make a separate scatter plot and do some things like that. So if you are going to eliminate outliers, which is a very good idea sometimes, um, make sure that you talk to your teacher and figure out exactly a plan about how you're going to talk about it and then what you're going to do before you do all of the math and then have to go back and do it again. All right, so you want to make sure we look at that first. All right. With that said, I need to make a table here. All right, I'm going to click off this. So I have my chart. So I have my x, y. So I'm going to make my table go across here a little bit more um, and insert some more things uh, into it. In your Excel, in your Excel, in your OneNote file, I have math symbols page. All right, these math symbols right here are what you're going to put into your um, table. All right, so everything's here. So I'm going to walk through how to put it in there right now. One of the things that you're going to end up having happen is you're going to need this top, this row right here that's going to have this row. It's going to have your symbols in it to be bigger. So I'm going to make it quite a bit taller. All right, I can always come back and make it smaller if I want to towards the end. All right, I got an X or Y in there. I'm going to put those in the center of this for right now. All right, so I'm going to put them in the center. I'm also going to make them quite a bit bigger. Uh, I'm going to make them like 30 point five for right now. 30. All right, and I'm going to make that go in the center. So that's right in here. This is aligning stuff around in there. So I'm going to put that in the center and I'm going to put uh, 30. And then I'm going to mess with those in a minute to make sure they look about the same. All right, so. The next challenge should be X bar and then Y bar. All right, so I have those in here. So I'm just going to screen clip the X bar. And then I'm going to put it into my Excel table. It will put it, whoops, I did the wrong thing. That's screen clip again, sorry about that. So it will put it, if you click in that cell, it will put it in that general area. But you have to click on it and move it and kind of get it in the middle of the cell. You can adjust the size of it. I'm going to make it about that size right there. All right, but we're going to get there. And then the thing is, it's floating. So if you do any adjusting to these columns, it's going to stay exactly where it is. It's floating on top of things. All right, Excel doesn't really recognize images um, as being in the spreadsheet. They're floating on top of the spreadsheet. All right, so X bar is going to go there. And let me go over here back and get Y bar. to be about the same size that looks pretty good all right so now these next ones i can tell you for sure they need to be wider so i'm just going to make that wider i'll adjust it when i'm done uh the next one is going to be x minus x bar all right so again it's right here they go in order so you can just follow down through x minus x bar so i'll we'll put it right there and shrink this back over so it's about that big screen bigger for now. The next one's going to be y minus y bar. And what these are is these are the calculations that the, that, the, that need to be done to get an R value. Um, so when the calculator does and spits an R value out, this is actually what the calculator is kind of doing behind the scenes. It's doing all these calculations in a matter of seconds. And so there's that one. And the next one's going to be taking the x minus x bar and squaring it, and then the y minus y bar and squaring it. So, sorry, that's not correct. The next one's going to be multiplying them together. I skipped this step. All right, so multiplying them together. So it's multiplying together these two numbers, the x minus x bar and the y minus y bar. It multiplies them together. I'm going to make that bigger so I know it's going to be a number. So there's that number. It's going to be kind of in the middle. I'm going to much shrink it a little bit. And okay, the next one is going to be x minus x bar squared. All right, now you're seeing lots of calculations and some of you are probably like, oh great, I have to do all these. Excel's gonna do them all for me. I was gonna type one formula into the top row and then Excel's gonna do all of the calculations automatically for me. So there's x minus x bar squared. The reason I'm putting labels on the top is so that then the person looking at this knows what's happened, what happened. Y minus y bar squared. And put that one into 
Okay, so there's my table. So now um, what I'm going to do is I need to put in uh, and tell the calculate and tell Excel what to do. So this column is just going to be x bar. So I'm just going to put equals, and then I'm going to go. Well, there it is. I couldn't I couldn't scroll over. Um, x bar is 15. So I'm just going to. But again, I'm going to have it reference this because if I had to change that x bar, I don't want to read this whole table. So I'm going to tell it to use whatever's in that thing. All right, but I want to drag this down and I want it to stay that cell for everything. So I'm going to hit the F4 button. All right, and it'll put those dollar signs on it. That means that every cell is going to use that specific thing. It's called a hard reference. All right, a hard reference means that it won't change. If I don't have those in there, it will change the reference based on when I drag it. All right, so that's going to be 15. And I'm just going to fill the top row in for right now. So this is the Y bar. So I want this to be that number. And again, I don't want it to change. So I'm going to hit F4 again and give it that hard reference. Yeah. All right. So it puts those numbers in. Just to show you what's going to happen, I'm going to undo this in a second. I'm going to drag that down. And those are all going to be 15s. All right. So I'm going to undo that. So then I'm just going to tell Excel to do what this says. So it says to do X, which is this one, minus X bar, which is that one. Now I'm not going to hard reference those because those need to change as I move down, um, as I move down the uh, column to new rows. So no hard reference on those. So you don't use hard references often. Okay, this is supposed to be y minus y bar. Okay, this next column is supposed to be x minus x bar, which is column k, times y minus y bar, which is this one here. So it equals this times, which is shift 8, and then that. This one is supposed to be x minus x bar squared, which is this one, shift 6 to get the caret. And then second power, because that tells it to make the second power. And then this one is y minus y bar squared. So this one to the second power. All right. So now what I want it to do is I want this to fill these things into every cell down below there. So I'm going to go over here to the corner. There's a little green square. And I'm going to click on that and hold down and then just pull down. And what it's going to do is it's going to copy that first row down to each of these rows and automatically do all of the calculations for me. So those are all the calculations I need. I probably want all these centered because it'll look better. So I'm going to hit the center right there and it'll put those in the center so it'll look a little bit neater. Okay, so there's those things. All right, so now to do my calculation, I need the total of this and this and this. All right, I'm going to leave a little space there. I'm going to put total. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type equals S-U-M, put a parenthesis, and I'm going to tell it to add all of these things in this row right here. So it's going to add those. All right, and then it's going to equals, equals S-U-M. It's going to add these. I'm going to tell it to add these too. Now, these don't have decimals, but I'm guessing they probably do. So one of the things you can always do in Excel is right in the middle here of the home tab, this decreases the decimal, this increases the decimal. I'm going to hit increase and see. Okay, that did come out to be uh, completely even. So there's no decimals there. This one, these are all whole numbers. Um, oh, which makes sense because these are all whole numbers. X's are all the whole numbers. Um, and the X bar is a whole number. Okay, so I'm not thinking here. That would be a whole number every time. That makes complete sense, all right? And because that's a whole number, when you do this column here, it's not surprising that that could be a whole number too. So I'm overthinking that. All right. The next thing I want to do is find um, the actual R value. So in my math thing here, this is the formula for Pearson's product correlation coefficient. So I'm going to copy that formula. All right. I'm going to copy that formula. I'm going to come to Excel. I wanted to stick my R value right here where I can see it. Hey, that's a big thing, and it's going to be floating on top of a bunch of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight an area here. I'm going to highlight an area about that big. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the Home tab, and in the middle here under the word Data is this thing, and that says Merge. All right, that's going to take all those cells and merge them into one cell. All right, so I'm going to do that, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste my formula in there, and I'm going to bring it over here. 
like that. All right, so that's going on my formula. That's how to get the R value. Remember, the E means sum. So it's the sum of all of the multiplied numbers, which is this 469. That's why I got it. All right. And then over the square root of the sum of all the squares times the sum of all the squares, which is these two. All right. So I'm going to tell it to do that. So I'm going to merge all of these together. All right. And then I'm going to have to type a very uh, complicated formula in here in terms of what I have to tell it to do. So pay attention to what I've got. So I'm going to hit equals, and I want it to multiply, I want it to divide this 469, so equals 469, divided by, now, this is where i got to be careful. I need to take the square root of both of these numbers multiplied together, all right? So Excel says square root, that's QRP, and then I hit parentheses, and it'll take the square root of whatever is in there. I want to take the square root of this total times this total all right so that's going to take this blue one and divide it by the square root of these two together right? all right and there is my r value now i'm going to move it so it's more up i'm going to make it so that it's maybe 20 point font all right so there it is so there's my r value all right so i've gotten everything here take your time all right and do it if you have trouble talk to me all right but don't just come and ask me i don't know how to do it Watch the video and take a look at it and try it. All right, so we get to our R value, our rate down.